Good morning, everybody. It's Robbie from Southern California. And you know what I'm going to do today? I haven't done this for a while. I'm going to do a nature walk. I'm going to start at Gary's Garden. I'm going to tell you what's going on. So it's kind of going to be like a nature walk, a little bit of a vlog and maybe an update. Look at this. This is Gary's Ubays. Aren't they gorgeous? Aren't they gorgeous? They're climbing everywhere. Just as beautiful as can be. Oh, his bananas got hit. Look at that. Let's see if we can walk down a little bit. And I'll show you. See the leaves on his bananas? We, we had that heat wave. You know, a lot of people will say we had a really hot summer. And I'm going to kind of say, in my opinion, we didn't have a hot summer. We had hot spells. That's what Gary says, too. Hot spells. Where we had hot days and maybe a week and then it would go back and be kind of cool but I didn't think we had a super hot summer now it's cloudy now and it's kind of still has smoke in the air oh last night the smoke came in boy did the smoke come in that's my garden up there because I thought somebody was setting you know like a um, pit fire in their yard and it was coming up the mountain but Gary said no that was the smoke so we still are dealing with a lot of smoke it depends on how the wind swirls it around but there's this fig tree, and there's the ube growing on the chain link. See how I go up? There's the stairs. And that's my garden up on the top there. I don't come down to Gary's garden every day because I'm so busy. I rarely, I usually come down here, if anything, once a week. I don't even know if I come down that much. But that's his garden, and we just did a garden tour, so you saw that. But this is all his ubes growing. And there's the fig tree, and like I said, the banana trees kind of got hit by the heat wave. And starting tomorrow, we have a new heat wave hitting. It's supposed to be really hot today. Let's walk down, and then I'm, I'm going to continue on and make a loop and tell you what's going on. Okay, now we're in Gary's garden. Like I said, I'm just doing a walk. I don't want to. I really don't want to make it that long, but we'll see what happens. Looks the same as it was the last time I was down here. And his garden is so green. Now, why is his garden so green compared to mine? I think his is a lot greener than mine. Oh, there's my apple trees he took. Look how beautiful. He's going to put them somewhere. I grew those from seeds. His is green because of this, where he has sunshade, sunshade all day. And that makes a big difference. That means no matter how hot it gets, when the sun is beating on all these plants, be it a type of kale or greens, you know, brassica or anything, it's going to be hot and then cooler because they get shade. Mine is in direct sunlight. So we have, oh my goodness, we're going to have to walk over there for a minute. So we do have, okay, the last time I came here, this wasn't like this. I could walk. Wow. Anyways, there's his cucumbers. So that makes the difference, this structure that's here. Now this was here when we got the property. So we didn't build it. We had all types of thoughts. Oh, he was gonna screen it in and have wildlife. Well, you know, not native wildlife, but get different things to put in here. And all these different things. Look at the artichoke. And the totes, and there's this purple tree color. We were gonna do that. And then we we're gonna think, oh, we'll set up tables and chairs and we could sit in here and have something to eat. Well, no, none of that ever happened, of course, because, well, it would have been very expensive. And the other thing was we started thinking, or he started thinking of getting wood chips and starting to garden. Now, the soil down here was just dust. You know that, it was clay literally clay dust so there was no way to grow anything in here it was he couldn't we i had tried the garden earlier oh many 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 years ago and it was a battle between gophers and look at that oh, i don't know what kind of bird that is oh, it's a songbird that just flew off between gophers and the soil being so bad. And it would have cost a fortune. It did. One year I went out and bought 44 bags of potting soil. That's really, really expensive. So gardening at the time was something that it was a luxury. It was almost a luxury to garden here. Look at this. Let's just peek in and then I'll keep going. Okay, it's all overgrown. Wow, we just did a garden tour here and it got really overgrown, which is beautiful. It's good. It's good for the plants. It's good for the birds like we just saw the songbird. So 
this is why we didn't garden in the beginning, because it was a luxury. You know, when you look at all the totes, you can't even see them, but he's got one, two, three, four, five totes here alone. No, six, there's another one back there. So he's got six in a row here with the ubeys growing. So gardening was a luxury. And for us, because you think about it, if you get good soil, let's keep walking, it's gonna cost, what? It could cost anywhere, I don't know if I came this way. No, I didn't, but let's look. It could cost you anywhere from, if you can get it on sale for a small bag, $5. Otherwise, 10, 20, and if you wanna get organic, I'm gonna step over, step over this. You know, 30, $40 a bag. Some of this stuff is $40. So we didn't do a lot of gardening. I grew some squash here and there and some tomatoes here and there, but that was basically it. You know the story, he knows the years. He started getting the wood chips because of health reasons. And he wanted to start really getting serious on growing. And when he figured out that that would be the way to do it, you know, growing your own, then he started growing. And that's, I don't need to get into that. We have, maybe not today, another time. There's his rhubarb. A lot of the rhubarb is pretty much done from the heat, but it'll come back. So anyways, that's what's going on down here. But you know, gardening can be a luxury. And I know a lot of you have told me, well, I can't afford to buy soil. And I don't blame you. And this is what, why I started doing the compost in place. Oh, I haven't seen his watermelon. Because when I started composting, I started analyzing, doing research. Oh, look at the apples. We've got apples. I started analyzing and doing the research and found out, wait a minute, step back. Step back and look at trees. Look at everything. Nobody is telling the trees, drop the leaves over here, let them break down, move them here. It, nobody's doing that. And plants, forget trees then. Let's just talk about plants in general. The plants are being fed by their own leaves. So the more research I did and the more I thought about nature, I went that way. He does have more watermelon. Look, he's got the watermelon growing in the tote and then he's got a great big watermelon. Oh, look, what happened here and it happened to one of mine too, is it grew overnight into the wire. See the line? You had to pull it out. So it's got a permanent little line. I had one of mine do that. It literally, you get up the next day and it's like doubled in size. It's amazing. And then he's got this little one. So he's doing really good. All right, let's keep walking. And then he's setting up. He's going to take another one of my swimming pools that I have in the front yard because I'm redoing my front yard. And he loves his pools and I love my totes. And he's doing totes and pools. I'm not doing that. Because he's setting up fish in here. So he's got all his fish and the fish love it and let him do his thing and I'm going to do mine. And that's the way it should be. But anyway, so I started composting in place. And let me tell you, when I started that, that changed my life. Things were growing, and I've had people say, no, you can't do that. I was collecting things from the garden, and I, leaves and stuff, and I was taking kitchen scraps, and I was dumping them in containers and areas, and what was happening? If I had a zucchini or a squash, and I took something and threw it in the container with no soil, they were growing. I suddenly was growing all kinds of plants. Tomato plants were growing. Everything was growing simply in its own matter breaking down. When I saw that happening, I thought, wait a minute. I am wasting my time. I'm not doing that anymore. All my containers, all of them, I compost in place. I just, I collect stuff from the garden. It doesn't matter what kind of leaves they are. It doesn't matter what kind of branches. I collect it and I throw that into the tote. So now with my containers, and Gary's doing the same thing, I throw all kinds of matter on the bottom. Can you pile in wood chips? Maybe, but the wood chips will try to break down and it may draw and cause, maybe draw where the plants may not grow as good. So I don't use wood chips on the bottom. I'll use pieces of wood mixed with a lot of green leaves. So you mix green and brown, but I don't use wood chips on the bottom. That I don't do. But I load the bottom with leaves, kitchen scraps. That's a big mix of green and brown. And while that's breaking down on the bottom, you're gonna have all kinds of fabulous stuff growing on the top. Now on the very top, what I do like to do is I do buy potting soil when I'm setting up new containers. 
You don't have to if you've got good soil. If you've already had containers set up, then you don't have to. You can use soil out of other containers that have already broke down and put that on the top. There's Gary's bees. We don't want to upset them because he doesn't even know I'm out here. We've had rabbits here have babies. And those are the bees that he climbed up a tree to get. We won't get into that today. And then he's piled all this here for the wild rabbits to have places to go into so the coyotes won't get them all. There's the truck bed. See, we went backwards today. So going back to the containers. So what I do with my containers to keep it cheap, and it's not just cheap, it works great. It's, it's like nature, like everything falling and rotting on the ground and things growing in it in the spring. I fill the bottom up with whatever I can find. It doesn't matter, look at that. That's aloe vera and the hummingbirds love the yellow flowers on that. So I load it up all the way up as far as I can. Now sometimes I throw some native soil in there, handfuls. Handfuls of native soil. It doesn't matter if there's some wood chips. Just scrape it up and use that. And on, sometimes I even go around where a gopher has dug up. The dirt that they pulled up from underground, I throw that in there. And that's like a rock dust. That's got minerals and stuff from underground that they have pulled up. So I'll throw a few handfuls of that as I'm throwing it in there. Look at that, there's his bathtub and there's his project he's working on. And then when I get to the top, I do like to have a good soil on the top. And when I say on the top, I'm literally talking maybe two or three inches. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. The plants that start, the young plants or my plant starts, and I do both. I'll plant from seeds, I'll have starts from inside the house. That was a hike early in the morning I just did. Then, they'll take off and they'll start to grow and as they're growing and setting their roots inside the totes as they're growing down to reach the matter that's on the bottom the leaves and everything everything is starting to break down and the plants love it and there's no waiting you're planting you're composting you're doing everything right then and there and that's why i love totes because the first half is just stuff from the garden. Branches, literally branches. I've had some say, well, it's going to block up the holes. If you're having a problem with your holes, make the holes bigger. I use a soldering iron, make the holes bigger. What blocks up the holes, really, is the roots of the plants. When they get really big later, that will block up the holes. The soil you're using, clay will block up the holes. The branches are not going to block up the holes. That's not going to block up the holes. It actually keeps everything open. Even the leaves keep everything open. But as things break down, the holes can get blocked. And when the plants are completely done, and I thought a lot of this stuff was done, I came here to pull out this zucchini yesterday, and what do I find? It's still throwing zucchini. And I was going to pull out another one. I found more zucchini there. Zucchini everywhere. I went over here. I thought, well, I'll pull this one out. Nope. It's still growing zucchini there. So things are still growing. So I'm going to give it a little, you know, more time. They're trying to throw wa more watermelons too, but I think we're too far gone for watermelons. The tomatoes, I'm going to clean that all up and that's going to stay hopefully all winter. But I do want to get a lot of these containers set up differently. And I will pull the t uh, strawberries out later on and plant them differently. It's kind of a waste of a tote like that when I can get so much more growing. But that's why I like the containers because I am throwing kitchen scraps I am throwing remember kitchen scraps is stuff from your garden too leaves squash leaves you know that's like kitchen scraps the birds eat that stuff animals eat leaves uh, the leaves from the squash and that goes on the bottom of the totes all that you pile up it saves you money and you think well I want the best if you want the best and you want to load up a tote with two bags because you would have to buy two bags of potting soil maybe and maybe not the big big bags but you would need at least two you're going to spend 10 20 dollars it's like setting anything up let's say you're going to set up a grow bag you're going to buy a grow bag you're going to fill it out with two bags of potting soil you're going to set up all that stuff by the time you've got one container set up. You're going to grow a watermelon. It's going to cost you $60, $70. You don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. If you can afford it, most certainly, certainly do it. 
I have no issues with that if that's what you want to do. With me, I can't. I cannot afford that. So the best thing is load it all up and let nature do its thing. Break it down and on the top only, just on the top. See, I've got a kale cutting now in here. That's where you put your soil on the top. About that much. You don't need a whole lot. And then I layer everything. So that's it for here. This, I, I've talked about this, and you're probably sick of hearing me say it, is my favorite garden. I'm going to do something with this chair. You can't find a patio chair. You can use a folding chair. Pick that up at Walmart for $10. $9, $9, $10. So all in all, this has been my favorite garden because of maintenance. Absolute maintenance. I love it. I walk in there, and it's all done in a matter of minutes, and I'm getting literally probably a ton of tomatoes. We picked so many yesterday. Gary came out here and took handfuls and handfuls and ate. I came out here and ate and they just keep growing and growing and growing. And they're so fast. I can't believe how fast. Those tomatoes have been fantastic. They're a hybrid of the Brad's Atomic tomatoes that probably grew off of something else I was growing and ended up with a bunch of plants and stuck them around. Most of them were that. And then I've got midnight snacks and some of them look like they're hybrids of mid midnight snacks. And then, oh, so many. Oh, this, you're going to have to there's a hummingbird and he went into the bathtub. That was so cool. See, let's see if we can see what he's doing. So anyways, that has just been amazing, the amount of tomatoes. Now my peppers are starting, which is really, really cool. Let's continue to do a quick walk around and I'll tell you what else is going on in the nature way. I figured I'd walk over here and show you what's going on. I've got tomatoes growing here. The birds come down See, they feed on the aloe vera, which is just dried up here, but then they go down there and feed on the aloe vera down there. But they fly through the trees here, which I just absolutely love. And then they land on the trees and then they dive down. And I put some twigs and stuff around here and they take a bath on this. That little cement block, I actually made that. They take a bath on that and they splash and splash and then they take off. And I don't know how the hawk does it, but the hawk gets in the bathtub and he jumps in and takes a bath too. A lot of this is duckweed on the top, and there is some hair algae that Gary's been slowly getting rid of, but this is full of fish. But when this is done, I'm hoping this is going to look really beautiful, like a little oasis in the yard, because he's building all this. Let's keep walking through here. He's working on this project, and yes, he is making his own rocks, and he's going to do a video on that. So this should look really cool later. We haven't done a whole lot because of the smoke and it's been very hard on Gary. The ash that we have, it's basically smoke right now more than ash. I haven't seen a lot of ash that's finally stopped for now, but the smoke, like I said, it was so thick in the air. I think I'm done on the totes here as far as adding any more because I'd like to get a lot more plants in here and make it fancy, but I've got to give him space to work. So I'm not doing anything over there. So this will be the last tote for here. I've got more totes other places going. These were fabulous. They're pretty much done. I've got to come through here and harvest this today before squirrels run off with it. I've got a couple there. I've got more in there. I ha There's another zucchini over there. Now the tomatoes I'm going to leave. Oh look, I see damage. Let me explain this. Let's see, do we see a hornworm on here? You're probably saying, there it is, I don't see it. See, this is hornworm damage. Oh, I hear something in here. Oh, a lizard running through. This is hornworm damage. Some of this is trimmings, but this is hornworm damage. We're going to start dealing with a little bit of hornworms now because the Orioles, all of them, have officially left. Kind of sad. I thought they left two days ago. But then I saw one, a young one, and then yesterday I saw none. Even putting food out for them, I saw none. So what happens with them, the Orioles are the beautiful yellow ones. We also get some of the other ones periodically come through. But we have the hoodeds here mainly now. They've kind of claimed this area as their place, even though the bullocks and the other ones come through. They come in males first, and that's how they leave, males first. Two weeks later when they come in and leave, the females leave. So what happens at the end of the breeding season is the males hang around for a long time. They help feeding the babies and stuff. I'll, I'll walk through and look, I just planted that. I hope it makes it. It was in a pot, this moringa. I had set a tap root into the ground past the pot. So it's still in the pot and I lost the tap root. So I'm hoping it will still make it and I like to put another moringa there. 
But after the babies are all well fed and they don't need any help from the parents, the males leave. So then you won't see any more beautiful, colorful males as far as the Orioles. Just won't see them. And then you'll only see the young ones and the females. And then the females leave. You can tell the difference. Females do have a different look. But then the females leave. And then once the females leave, the, all that you're left with is a bunch of juveniles running all over, doing their thing. And they're eating. Oh, my gosh. They're, they go through my chair garden. They're eating the hornworms like mad. And they're doing a great job. And then one day, like yesterday, they're suddenly all gone. It's sad. I'll miss them. Probably won't see them depending on the weather, how the weather conditions are. Probably not till maybe April, March or April. These zucchinis, talked about a, a lot, they are growing next to the totes. They are not in the totes, these three big ones here. They are where the drain holes are. And as bad as this one looks, I can't believe I've ended up with so many zucchinis off of this one. Look at that. I've got to get that in. This one had zucchinis that look like watermelons. There's still one left, and they're still throwing flowers. So I've got to get... Look at this. This is no joke. Look at this. Look at this. So I've got to get that up out and I just love zucchini. Zucchini is my favorite and I, I'll do a video on that why they're my favorite. They are my favorite squash. If I had to grow one squash only it would be zucchini. If I had my choice I would grow one squash only but when I save my seeds a lot of times they hybridize or the seed itself the original seed may not have been pure only to grow once I end up with that. And I know this, and it's not just from here. Other countries, Australia has talked about it. You can buy zucchini, grow only zucchini, save the seeds, and you'll end up with all kinds of different things. So not much you can do right now. That's just the way they do it. There's more here. See, this, these end up hybrids. And these were my own seeds saved. And that's what you end up with, a bunch of hybrids. There's a white zucchini. Isn't that cool? And they're, they're still good. They're still good, so I have no complaints. But again, then again, these are growing next to the drain holes. And this one just so happens the way it's situated, it's getting water out of this one and water out of this one. So how I fill it, and I've talked about it with all the leaves and kitchen scraps and any, anything that was something alive breaking down, it just feeds the ones next to it. So don't forget, if you've got totes on the ground, and even if you've got them on a chair or something up, remember that water running out is gold when it comes to growing. You can always catch it and use it that way. So that's basically it. But if I had my favorite zucchini to grow it, or my favorite squash, it would be zucchini. My watermelons are done. I'll probably clear them out really, really soon. And I still have to plant my potatoes. Uh, but I'm just going to leave them right now. Like I said, we're going to a heat wave. I do have, uh, this is Korean melons. The other one we picked... And they will go all the way until the weather completely changes. These little yellow flowers are a little yellow fruit. They're fabulous. And this is amazing. All the way to the top and on the way out. But that's basically it. Let's see. What else is here? The white crown sparrows have not shown up yet. I've got some seeds I'm starting in here. And I put it out here to get a little bit of sun. This, let's see. This is cilantro starting. I've got some cabbage back there I need to separate and get into the ground. And there was something else I think that's not, that hasn't started yet. There's a few other things I've got around here. Got some sorrel I pulled out from the front and put in a container. So if you're doing, you know, totes, don't forget layering is fantastic. See, that's in a container and that's sorrel. See? So I will be cleaning all this out. So the white crowns haven't shown up yet. There'll be other birds, little by little, that will show up, and there'll be other birds that are gone. We should winter with all the songbirds coming in, and they're all coming in. Some stay here all year, and then some come back later. This I just planted. So this, see how good this is? Look how thick that stalk is. Just something I moved over and put in here. So I'm going to have, hopefully, tomatoes. And as soon as I determine that this is not going to grow anymore, it grew this funky little thing. I will stop that, cut it, and let the tomato have that for the rest of this fall and winter. Let's see, so what else is coming in here? We'll have a lot of birds, but the songbirds, the real beautiful ones with the yellow, they'll be coming in, uh, all kinds of songbirds will be coming in, and they'll stay here all winter. 
this is still amazing. Even Gary said, do you want me to move it? I said, no, leave it. This was a piece of ginger that I thought was dried up and dead, and I had thrown it into that container. This was at the front door a while back, and I moved it here oh, months ago, and it grew. So it may not be real happy there. See how it's yellowed? Because it gets a lot of sun. And it's too warm, really, for ginger. And ginger likes a little bit more shade, not such hard, hot, direct sunlight. But you know what? It came up. I'm leaving it. And when I redo this tote later, I will pull it out and probably put it in the front yard. That would be the place to go. Let's go in the front yard real quick. I have been cleaning, but I don't want to show you the front yard. I'll show you on the garden tour. I have been cleaning in here and redesigning. I have no idea what this is. It took off and it started to grow. I don't know what it is, but it's some sort of round squash and it's just taking off and growing everywhere. So obviously whatever squash this is, it is just doing good. Now it hasn't really thrown a lot of fruit. There's some little ones I've seen on there. So we'll see what this turns into, but I have been working in my front yard. Got a big zucchini off of that the other day. Gary's gonna take that swimming pool. Like I said, I don't wanna really go in here. I'll wait till a garden tour. And see what I'm doing? This one drains really good. So this one, I'm just starting to load up from the yard. There's celery in there, there's red vein sorrel, and I'm getting ready. Now, if I wanna plant zucchini or watermelon, I think this is a little too shaded for watermelon, but let's say zucchini later on in the spring, then I'm just gonna let this sit. But I could put a pot on top, and then I can move the pot later put in some more kitchen scraps. I don't even have to put any soil on top. Just put a flower pot with something in there and that's in a pot. And then I can move it later and plant some squash. Same thing here. Now this one, see how it got really hard? This one, the holes are not draining as good as I would like. So I'm gonna dig some of that soil out. It's very wet. I was testing it yesterday. Gonna take that out, but I'm gonna use that and maybe I'll put it in another tote. But right now I'm going to dig it out a little bit and then put a bunch of branches and stuff in there and start over. And that's what you do. Every tote is different. Everything you're working with is different. And don't forget, composting in place, you could do that in the ground as well. Doesn't mean you have to put it in a container. I love this cement wall. This has done just fantastic. You probably, if you saw any of the garden tours, saw that you could barely see anything growing in here. And now they're taking off all my walking onions. This is tool done differently this year than I did last year. It's just been tied around the back and flipped over. That's why I've got these rocks holding it down from the wind and just holds the tool. And all I have to do is reach my hand underneath. And I decided with this to just, just do walking onions. And yes, there is some garlic chives there. They were already there, so I left them there, but I put a walking onion in the very first one, and there's two with garlic, garlic chives, and the rest is all walking onions. Isn't that beautiful? Nothing bothers them, so this is perfect. Nothing's gonna try to get through. They don't even, you know, I'm not gonna have the deer coming through. I put some kale here last year, and the deer came through and ate the tops because it was growing up. It was open on both sides. Now this whole thing is closed. Just works out fantastic. Look at this. Tomatoes. That's starting to take off. Isn't that something? It grew all year very slow and now I'm gonna have to get some more steaks out. It's really starting to take off. My table, it, I'm just so happy with all of this. It's perfect. And then I'm just gonna put some more walking onions. Walking onions, these green onions, are gonna be my thing I'm gonna grow this year. As many and as much as I can. I haven't bought any onions from the grocery store since the lockdown, March. So I'm just using the walking onions and they grow here just so great. I will grow some white onions, but the walking onions are just everything to me. Isn't this gorgeous? I'm really happy. I worked out here for a good hour or so yesterday, moved a bunch of stuff around and I think it looks really good. And I'm gonna get more. Once Gary gets that pull out, I'm going to line up more totes. I'll explain it more on the garden tour. And I'm going to have more totes there. And, they're way, and the reason why I changed the format of it, of the layout, is to make my life easier. And that was it. Then here, this is going to be like a ginger table also. Because obviously my ginger is really taking off. And so is my turmeric. My black ginger is going to have to be split off this year. That little tiny nothing piece that Gary gave me, that little tiny piece, is now all this. Look at th this is all black ginger. 
Nothing but black ginger in here. You see the leaf? You can tell black ginger. If you ever see the stripe down the leaf, see the black on the leaf? It's kind of, it's really a dark brown, I guess you would say. You'll know that's black ginger. So that's going to end up going into two, possibly three more containers. See, this is regular, did I say ginger? Turmeric. Turmeric. Um, this is regular turmeric, the orange, and that will be just the green leaf which is perfectly fine. That's the best one to buy. If you've got to grow any type of turmeric, get the orange. This is some sort of medicinal uh, turmeric and it's more for fun, but I will be using it. I haven't used it yet. We've tasted it, but we haven't used it yet. See the leaf? I showed that earlier in the year. Something got to the top of the leaf or whatever and then the whole leaf grew that way. But isn't that, look how packed it is in there. It really took off. So that while I will take that apart and I will separate that, eat a little bit, and then replant it back. I'm going to have a ton of that next year. And then, of course, my stevia. This is my stevia, and it's going to seed now. But I just let it come back up from the roots, and that's what it does. It just comes back, and then this is all my... This is ginger. See, ginger's got the skinny leaf. And then, of course, your turmeric has got the great big leaves. And this has been the perfect spot for it. It likes the morning sun, which comes through. Let me swing you around. Comes through, and it's starting to peek through the trees. So it'll get a few hours of morning sun, and then it has the warmth all day up against the house, but it doesn't have the blazing sun on it. And it just works perfect. And that's what's going on. So what else is going on? I'm working on other videos. I'm trying to get my act together, because I've got two videos I so want to get out. I think you guys, some of you will really get a kick out of it. You may be able to do do it and use use a couple of the ideas I've come up with but I'm collecting seeds and I'm forever losing my seeds I took all year I should say it took me all year until recently to find some seeds I was looking for I lost my sprouting broccoli if you remember from my past videos I had these bushes growing here it's probably five years ago now that were sprouting broccoli and they would grow like a bush and the birds are all coming in to take a bath and it grew all these little broccolis, not like broccolini, because broccolini, which I have over here, grows a little differently. They grow, I don't even know where it is, it's down here. They grow like stems of broccoli. See, here's broccolini growing. See how it grows a long stem? Well, the broccoli I bought from this guy, if it grows again like it did, would grow like a bush and grow little tiny broccolis all over it. I just snap it off and I would be using it. It was so great and then eventually the plants died out. The last one died out, I guess it was five years old. I could not find my seeds. I went nuts because when the guy sent it, he sent it in this teeny little bag. Well, I found it. I'm not losing seeds anymore. I came up with a whole different method now of seeds and I'll get that hopefully up real soon. And then I'm going to start an indoor garden as well. And I think almost anybody can do it. I Well, anybody could do it if they want to go a little bit further out if they don't have any light. But you'll see this indoor garden and it's going to cost you maybe five bucks. The birds are all over here. All kinds of little birds. I love my mountains. I've got to sit down and do a vlog. Some of you have asked me where is my vlogs and why they're not in order. I started vlogging a while back and I think I bored people. So I stopped. And I'm going to have to get the few I did in order so you can see it. But if you want me to vlog, just to sit down and vlog, let me know. But I don't want to get, you know, people bored. All in all, everything is doing good. This is going to come out and I'm going to put something else in here. I already know asparagus is going in here. And then we'll just see what happens. So all in all, that's what's going on. The birds are starting to come back. Starting to think about the things I'm going to do differently. Getting ready for another heat wave and then, of course, more fires because we're in the middle of fire season. And tomatoes are doing really good. I have no complaints on tomatoes. Been collecting tomatoes and freezing them. And the papayas are doing good. These are smaller papayas. I don't want to put the camera up because of the sun, but these are smaller papayas and they do good and they're in the tote. But they're strawberry papay papayas and then we can go out here. But of course, you know, the other ones we have here, I think they're called Mexican papayas. Those are the ones that Gary really loves. I mean, we like the strawberry ones, but there's, these get so big. This year, a little bit smaller, but that's okay. We don't need massive 10-pound, 15-pound fruit. Look at that. 
this has been great. He picked one yesterday and then they've got the offshoots now. And the totes, I never planted in these totes this year, but it doesn't matter. Because these totes are here for one reason. I had a cage over that from last year because I had a tomato plant growing and something started to chew at it. Probably a squirrel. So these totes are strictly here to throw things in, see? This feeds this massive plant the leaves from the papaya, and that's why the totes are here. But we'll see, and that's it. Now we're back to the same spot I was. We did a big circle. Now I've got to get in here and pick some pomegranates too. That's a tree I planted from a seed, and we have more pomegranates. I could grow more. Oh no, no, I don't, didn't even know what to do with the last ones. So that's it, look at that. Pomegranates. One of your healthiest fruits, they say too. And then sometimes I leave them on the counter and forget to eat them. Can't do that. So that's it. Tree of life in the spring. To think, you know, what? Another, wow, six, seven months from now, this will be just full of birds. All kinds of birds. The goldfinches, the bush tits, the wren tits. The wrens, they all nest in this tree. So many different birds. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It just comes to life. Right now... It's quiet, but they hang out in it all the time. But that's it. So I've made a big circle with you. Isn't that cool? It's a table that Gary found by the railroad tracks. No, he went somewhere. I think he went to the post office and he said, I saw a table you may want. It's by the railroad tracks. I said, maybe it belongs to somebody. No, it's in the middle. Somebody dumped it. He went back and got it. So I'll see. It's glass. And that's it. Nothing else new on this. I just need to get to, I got to get the video up on the seeds because I think some of you will get a kick out of this and say hey that might work for me and then the garden that I'm doing indoors that and then I've got so many other things I've got to get some more fountains set up too even here I've got to get more bird feeders when I say bird feeders maybe hummingbird feeders so so the hummingbirds can be on this side of the yard too because they have a lot of places to hide and I'll have to separate them. I should put a hummingbird feeder in the Moringa. And then I've got the hummingbird feeder there. And I had one on the truck bed. I think I took that in last night to wash and clean. There's still, there's two there. But we'll talk more about hummingbirds too. They're going to be coming in. Sugar went up again. Well, let's just say it went up. The price went up. I was expecting that. You know, with the holidays coming and also knowing where sugar is coming from, some areas may not be shipping as much, so I'm hoping not to have an issue with that and run out of sugar. That would be entertaining. No, I, I won't run out of sugar, because no matter what, I would buy sugar, no matter what it costs, I think. Charge it. So, um, keeping up with all that. But yes, the migrators are going to start coming through. We had a bunch come through the, let's say, a week or so ago, and I knew they were migrating. They were coming in a massive, large numbers, and there was hundreds and thousands of them. And I saw a couple different colored pies. I couldn't get a good photograph of them. And I was waiting for them to come back and I saw them for about two days and I haven't seen any of them since, not those. Which means they moved on. They absolutely moved on. And there's been, again, the wave comes and goes. And I went live, I think, last year when they were coming in by the tens of thousands. That's what it seemed like because the trees were black with them. So they'll move through, and if they're going to stay here, they'll stay. The ones that stay here aren't really here yet. The Costas aren't here yet. They come in, and they winter here and stay until early spring, and then they take off. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're the bright purple ones, and they're not here. And I think I saw, I'm, I don't want to say the name because I might not say it right, Collie up, Sully up. And the reason I think it was that, and I think it was a young one, is the flights were so much longer than the tail. And they, or they aren't on the other five species we have here. The flight feathers bypassed it by a good half inch. And by the time I went to get my camera and get a photo of it, I couldn't. It was gone already. So it might have been passing through. Because remember, they don't really fly in groups. They come in in groups because they're all going in the same direction. But they don't really travel in groups, hummingbirds. They just travel because they're all going basically to the same place. They don't pair off, they're not buddy buddies, they just do what they have to do and get where they want. That's why there's so much competition on food, because that they're, each one is so independent to itself, very independent birds. And that's basically it. So I'm going to see if I can get my seed act together and get that together and my indoor garden that I absolutely love. 
And maybe, just maybe, I'll get a cup of coffee and sit out here and watch all the birds come in. Because we're going to have a whole bunch of different types of birds soon. Because we are now in the fall, and the birds that are traveling through will be coming through here, and the birds that are going to winter will be here. And let's hope for a mild winter. Have a great day. And, ugh, i got to do an update on this, too. Have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Let's see, we'll get some tomatillos off of this. Got a lot of flowers. Sure didn't get any squash. This is my tree. That's right. This is one that grew in the front yard. Yep, and I'm going to plant it out front. It came up from seed in my front yard under the pine trees in that pot, right? This is yeah. the same pot. Same now, what pot. is it? An Australian silk oak. Did you bring the seed with you? Was it on your clothes? No. <laughs> no, how did it end up in my front, in that pot? The bird must have dropped a seed. It's, I think it's one of the few grevilleas that can grow here from seed because the others are pollinated by birds. Isn't that something? It just showed up. It was so pretty, and I just left it, and I was I had no idea, and then that's why I said, what is that? So you knew what it was, or did you look it up? No, I knew what it was. I knew exactly what it was when I saw it. It's got a yellow flower to it that attracts bees and other pollinators, and the wood or the timber can be used in, instead of oak. It's got a nice, dense timber to it. So It's a big it. tree. It's a big tree. It can grow up to 60 foot tall. Well, okay, well, I'll let you do your That's thing. That's cool. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's nice to end up with a nice tree that grows from seed, like a weed in your yard, and just the perfect pot. I mean, the perfect place in a pot already. All you do is pick it up and do what you want with it. There is a possibility it came in with the wood chips, too. So. Oh, because we don't have any around here, do we? Not close by, no. Hmm, because I do sometimes put some wood chips on the top and maybe it grew that way. I, I don't remember what was in there. Do you remember what was in there? Was it walking onions or something? It was something like walking onions. Yeah, it just started growing and I left it and it grew fairly quick. All right, well, I'll let you do your thing.